Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun update by Flowmotion. Because it's that time again. I woke up today and something felt different than usual. Do you know the feeling that you have missed some update? And that's why I'm here for you. Because After Effects 2023 is out today and I'm going to show you the most important changes for you. Which will be the five most interesting changes. So let's start where we usually start. We have opened up After Effects and want to create a new comp. And here we go because finally the comp window has been cleaned up and updated. Here you don't find all the usual presets anymore because they took out a lot of the old preset corpses and added and sorted lots of new ones for all your favorite social media channels. And that will also play a big role later when we talk about rendering. But not only here are new presets, no, because there are also 50 new animation presets. Hey, and for all of you who now have a big question mark over your face. What? Animation presets? You can find the animation presets here at the effects and presets. As the name suggests, these are not effects, but already created presets for effects. So maybe it's best if I show you a few examples and I try to use as many new as well as old presets that I possibly can. And then you have to promise me two things. First, how about subscribing to my channel? I actually see only advantages. Maybe I'm a little biased. Okay. And second, take some time after that video and try out some of the presets and let me know what you think. Deal? Okay, so first I've put together a little cartoon animation with a handwriting font and a rotating globe. Hmm. Yes, okay, looks quite nice, but I'm not impressed. I want the whole thing to look more like stop motion and hand drawn. So I search for hand drawing and voila, there is a new preset. And if I drag this on an adjustment layer, I directly get a few effects together with sliders to fine tune everything. And if I run this now, then we already see what we are up to. So how about a hand-drawn arrow? When I type an arrow, there's an already animated one. Perfect. And when I put it beneath our adjustment layer, it fits to the rest. Hey, and maybe I want to add an overall wiggle. But today I'm really too lazy to type in any code. So I just take a wiggle preset. Oh, wow. And there are really a lot. So code is not that bad if you don't have to know it by heart. And because I have a good run right now, let's animate some code. So I just copied the code that After Effects did for me automatically and paste it into a new text layer. Okay, the whole thing should look now as if it's written as we are used to from code of from the matrix. Okay, if I search for code, there's a glitchy text decoder. Perfect. And I can time the length of the animation here and I can even pick out which cursor shape I want. Hmm. And I'll take the less than sign. Super cool. Glitch and matrix look are automatically on it. Hey, I honestly haven't used the presets for a while, but if you play around with them, you get a creative boost. Promised. So and here's already the next handy new feature for today. Actually a time saver, but for me this absolutely serves the clarity in the comp. If I wanted to select a Luma or Alpha Matte in previous versions of After Effects, I always had to put this directly over the clip and select it. Mostly I used the mat for many layers, so I duplicate it and duplicate it and duplicate it and then I changed something on a mat. For example a mask refinement. And already I was again in the copy-paste intoxication. But that has now finally come to an end. I can now take the pick whip as I've done so far only for parenting and select what should be my mat. And now I can have only one mat to use for thousands of layers. And in addition, I have two sliders with the first, I choose whether I want to have Luma or Alpha mat, and with the second, whether it is a normal or inverted mat. This is so good. I have a thousand times less layers and I only have to worry about one mat. So this is clever thinking. And speaking of smart, the smartest decision in a long time is that we can now render MP4 files directly in After Effects. 
Remember in the very beginning when we could choose social media formats for the comp? And now that's been thought through to the end and we can also render social media file formats just like H.264. So add your comp to the render queue, choose your output module and here you find your H.264 codec. And when you twirl down here, there are even three presets, high, low and standard. So that's indeed my favorite one so far. So what about yours? Let me know down below. And now up to the last new feature that I want to show you today. But this is a bit more advanced. So if you need to take a break now, well, you can. And if you don't want your brain to hurt, maybe you should stop watching right now. So if you are a content creator like me, I guess you also have a similar camera, a Canon or Sony, maybe even a mirrorless camera. Hey, and you try to get the most out of it, of course. So of course you are shooting in lock. And if not, maybe you should do it in the future. Hey, and for everyone who doesn't know what a lock color space is, here's a super quick rundown. At a normal color space, you work linear. So all color values from bright white to dark distribute on a straight linear line. But for color grading, you really want to have a lot of information in your highlights and shadows to get more detail. So to get more information there, you could create a curve. So you get extra information over here. But the result is also that the image looks flat as you're losing detail over here. But as you now know that curve, you can apply something that is called a LUT, which stands for look up table which will bring it visually back to a linear line with the advantage that it now looks as before, but you have way more information to play with. And that is why movie cameras are able to have so many detail and dynamics in their shots. But if you followed along, all of this is complicated, right? And when I use my camera and shoot lock, it looks like that. But you are used to watch it like that and I hope you get the point, before it was hard to do, so you sometimes just did not do it. But now you can shoot in lock, import the footage, right click, interpret footage and simply choose how you have filmed it. In this case, it was shot with Canon Lock 3 and voila, it looks as supposed to and I can directly work with it. But remember that I can get way more out of this file now because I have recorded way more color information. And now we are working at the state of the art. But Adobe, if you're watching, I would really love to have even more cameras in there. What about the R5, R6, or maybe the Blackmagic Cinema line? Thank you. And this is all for the day. But I have to say that there is a super cool new feature on its way that is coming very soon. And this is no click. That will definitely be a jaw dropper. So if you want to be one of the first ones to know about that, simply subscribe and hit the bell to not miss any new information. And for now, I wish you a lot of fun in After Effects 2023.